Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy D Lloyd, and we are here with the start of our NCAA 06 Dynasty Mode series. Now, this series will be running in conjunction with our Cleveland Browns Madden 06 franchise, which means all of the players, once they decide to go pro and we export the draft class, their careers will continue in Madden 06. We're also going to be playing this in chronological order when it comes to time and weeks. So everything is going to be up to date in both series. So some of you guys just want to watch college, that is fine. Some of you guys just want to watch Madden, that is also fine. But for those that want to get the full experience, that want to watch both series as it goes together, we're going to be doing that here with this series. So we're going to be using Kentucky, of course, only a two-star prestige school. They are a four-star academic school. Of course, my alma mater, you guys know I have to rock with them. That's the team we're going to be rocking with in this series. So first thing we're going to do is just the off-season stuff. It's not a lot in these 06 games, not nearly as much as in the newer games or up to 14 games, but there's still a pretty nice amount of stuff in here. This is the first year that they actually have in-season recruiting. So I'll show you guys how that process sort of works. Still simplified, but it's still cool nonetheless. This is still my favorite NCAA game of all time. I'm excited to be bringing you guys this series so as you could expect we are not in the top 25 at all but utep yes utep was ranked back in 2005 that is definitely crazy to see so you see me going through the preseason rankings uh, ratings right now and you see we fall at number 88 so yes 88 is where we're going to be starting off this series we were two and nine last season we're a c plus overall we're also in the SEC, so it's going to be extremely tough for us to try to beat some of those top-ranked teams, but we're looking forward to the challenge. As for the Heisman watch, this was probably, at least when I was a kid, one of the best Heisman watches ever. Look, Matt Liner at number one. You have Adrian Peterson as a sophomore at Oklahoma. He's at number two. Then, of course, Reggie Bush, my favorite running back in college of all time. Number three, you have Vince Young, who ended up playing for my Tennessee Titans. Didn't like him in college, though. He was number four. Then, of course, Ted Ginn Jr., the speedster out of Ohio State. He is at number five. When you look at all the All-Americans, of course, a lot of the guys that we just seen, Hagen was there, but we have absolutely nobody on the first team All-American list. Something that you kind of expect. When you look at the second team, Omar Jacobs. I don't know who that is, but he was a second team All-American from Bowling Green. So that is something interesting to watch out of the quarterback spot. But the same thing, we don't have any second team All-Americans currently on our roster. So hopefully in a few seasons, we could definitely change that moving forward. But our roster isn't the strongest, and you'll see that in a second. Taking a look at the All-SEC team, Chris Leak. He's first team quarterback. I remember Chris Leak. That dude was a beast in college. I don't really know what he did in the pros. I don't even know if he went to the NFL or not. But he was definitely nice when he play played for Florida back in O. Five. Quentin Groves was there. I liked him a lot out of Auburn as well when he played. Um, but once again, we don't have anybody that was a first team all conference. So we're going to be switching over to the second team all conference to see if we have anybody there because our roster right now is looking very, very lackluster. And the first guy I see on the second team, Jay Cutler. Yes, Jay Cutler from Vanderbilt, redshirt senior. We'll have a season against him. Um, and play against them. So we get to play against Jay Color at some point this season. That will be interesting to kind of watch. Andrew Whitworth, that guy is a beast at Lyman, um, but he's still in college here in this game. So some game, some guys, excuse me, you will be familiar with, you will know. And I think it's going to be cool when we put them all into the draft classes and we're drafting guys that we already kind of know. Then, of course, once we recruit players, we're drafting those guys as well. But finally, we get somebody on the All-American list, Muhammad Abdullah, strong safety. And that is it. That's the only guys we have on the All-American list. He's just All-SEC second teamer, but we're going to take it. Looking at conference outlook, like I said, we're in the SEC. A ton of ranked teams. Alabama is fifth, projected coming fifth in the conference. That tells you how stacked we were. And Kentucky is all the way at the bottom. The last ranked team in the SEC. So we already have a tough schedule. You see the strength of schedule is a A-. We're going to go ahead and make it just a little bit tougher 
because I have to play this team before they dismantle and go pro, and that is USC. Yes, number one USC will be playing them in LA. That's going to be a good one, but I have to play against Matt Liner and Reggie Bush and see if we can hold our own against them. So our schedule is tough, but I think it's going to provide a little bit more entertainment during this series. As for red shirts, I initially thought about red shirting Curtis Pulley. 82 speed backup, but we decide we are not going to use a red shirt on him. We're going to keep him and see what happens. Um, Beach is going to be our running back. 88 speed, not the fastest guy in the world, but he's our best running back. So he is going to stay at the running back position. Once again, we are not going to use the red shirt on any halfbacks. As for fullbacks, there's really nobody to red shirt there. Wide receivers, we have a couple of good ones, but they're all upperclassmen. So a couple of seniors, one junior, really nobody that we really want to use a red shirt on. No freshmen on in our receiving core at all or group at all. So we're not going to use it. I'm really only trying to red shirt freshmen and hope that we could just recruit some of these other guys. I don't know how many people we could bring in during these recruiting classes, especially as we readjust to learning how to recruit in NCAA 06 again. So we want to keep as many of these guys as possible. But at the same time, we don't want to hold on to the guys, especially when I think in a few years we will be able to bring in better guys as true freshmen or as sophomores. So that is the angle and this reason why we really didn't register a lot of people at all. As for the our defensive ends, you see we have a decent one at right end, which is good. And then our freshmen are decent as well the rest are freshmen already so you can't rush with them again but they're decent but that is the common theme you will see with our roster we really don't have any superstars everybody is decent to quite frank bad that is our roster currently constructed right now you see we have 60 overalls who are actually going to start people under 70 overall will actually start for us on this club our middle linebackers are 72 if he gets hurt Man, you got to see the backups right there. If he goes down with the injury, it is not going to be good at all for us. Our cornerbacks are decent, but they're extremely slow. 87 speed, 85 speed, 86 speed. So you guys are getting the point as we're going through this entire roster. Not the best. Not the best, but that is why we are here to recruit and make Kentucky into the powerhouse that they deserve to actually be. So we will go ahead and register our kicker right here. And that is it. That is all we're going to do for registers. Now, this is the first year NCAA 06 that they have in-season recruiting. In all the previous NCAA games, you can only recruit after the season is up. You can still do that. And the way it works here is you select up to 12 people. That's the max amount of guys you can sign during the season is 12. Now, during the offseason, a lot more recruits become available. So it's not just these recruits right here. These are the ones that you can only recruit during season. There's going to be more guys available in the offseason that you'll be able to get a chance at landing. These guys are more of what I call make-a-wish players. They're going to be, you know, your four stars, your five stars. Occasionally, you throw a couple three stars on that list. But they're guys that you're kind of hoping that you can persuade over a course of an entire season season so you see the needs you're gonna see me going and looking at the needs throughout this entire clip right here but you really have to balance what positions you really want to go after during season and you know if you don't recruit that position in season and you need that position you need to hope that that position has interested players during the off season so that's kind of the balance in the game that you have to play when deciding on what exactly you want to do for example we're looking at receivers right here we really don't need need a receiver but i would like to get a receiver so we add two guys from receivers on that list as for tight ends and a lot of our line besides center we do need a center we really don't need a lot of other linemen positions but you've seen our offensive line it's not that good at all so i'm looking at tackles even though we don't need one i'm thinking it's worth the chance of spending a lot of points and really focusing on one because, of course, if we have a strong offensive line, that will help us out a lot. So we only add literally one tackle to our list. We actually do need a center. The top guy is a pipeline guy. But the bad part is you don't know exactly where you are on their list before you add them to your list. 
So you're really taking the gamble. You could add him and you could be at the very bottom of his list once you simulate past week one. And you guys will see exactly where we fall on everybody's list because we will go past week one. We don't have a game. And then we'll see where we are before we actually start playing these games. But it's, it's difficult trying to figure out who you want to add this is all the information that you really get yes it is valuable you do see the 40 yard dash time but you're not looking into actual attributes you're not scouting like you are in ncaa 14 you're going off of this you're going off of maybe he may be interested maybe he won't be interested so it's really a gamble and i know in years past when i used to play this game a ton i would just add people and this is the reason why i call them making wishes and you're just literally wishing and hoping that you're high on his list at the end of week one so you can have a realistic shot at trying to land him right here we're looking at middle linebackers the middle linebackers are terrible we see a guy who ran a four five six so we're gonna go ahead and add him to the recruiting board cornerbacks the guy ran a four two allegedly because then once you scout him it'll tell you the real 40 yard dash time but allegedly he ran a four two that is absolutely great so we're going to add one to our list and just see if maybe, just maybe, we can get one of them to bite. But we're going to add another cornerback as well. This guy ran a 4-2-4. So we're thinking about maybe going with Norwood. You see me still looking at the rest of them. A lot of four-star guys. We're now in the three-star guy section. A lot of them as well. But if we're going to make a wish, we're going to try to get somebody who has at least the speed or who has the size. Curtis, Nor uh, Curtis Norwood. He runs a 4 2 4. We're going to add him to our list. So, this is who we end up with. After the 12 guys we have, this is who we have. So, the Eric Gary, the number one center who was a pipeline. You see, we are third on his list. Running back Matt Hicks, we run a 4 3 1. We are second behind Virginia Tech. So, maybe we can have a decent shot at trying to land him. Reggie Carey, the tackle we added. You see, we're at the very, very bottom of the list. So, that is not good, also. But we're going to keep him on there, and we're going to see what we can do. Um, Lawrence Sherman, we just need a middle linebacker bad, so it really didn't matter where we were on that list. We were going to keep him. Manny Roberts, the 6'4 corner. We're pretty low on his list, but we're going to see what happens. Um, Sowell right here, not high on his list either. The Norwood guy we just talked about, also in the middle of the pack on his list. Nobody is really loving us so far, so that's a little bit concerning. But we do get the guy right here in David Ostrom. 6'5", 178, lanky guy, but tall, interested in us. Marquise Williams, another guy who's interested. 6'3", 178. So once again, skinny, but tall and quick. And then we finally get a linebacker right there in Copeland. He has some interest. You see Damian Jones, another center at the very bottom. And then Steve Bailey, we're third. But we have opportunity to get the other running back that was right a little bit higher. So what I ended up doing was giving everybody... 10 points except for jones and bailey we're just not going to recruit them and we're going to hope that these 10 guys can actually give us some leverage in trying to actually get them but that is pretty much where we're going to end this episode i don't want to make this entirely too long we will be starting the games with the next episode in both madden and in this ncaa 06 series i'm definitely excited to be bringing you guys this series um it's one of my favorite you know series of all time in terms of the ncaa series madden knows uh, ncaa 06 I think is the best all around NCAA game, but it is going to take a little bit of time getting used to these mechanics and you guys are going to be here as I'm trying to learn this game all over again. But that is everything that I have for this episode as usual. Make sure you guys go ahead and leave this video a like. It helps me out a lot and subscribe if you haven't already. It's your boy D. Lloyd. I'm going to see y'all next time. Peace.